It was nighttime again. The engines were all finished with their work and were retreating to the sheds for another good night's rest. But not without, of course, a story. Who wants to tell a story tonight? Steve, how about you? We've been over this. Again, I'm sure someone else here has a good story to tell. Any volunteers? Me? I really get a chance to tell stories. Well? Whatever. Tell us your story. My story tonight is a spooky one. And not only that, but it's confirmed to be true. Once upon a time, there was an engine who used to work in this very yard. He was old and kind, but often was very cautious. Things came to a shocking end for him when one night, he was sleeping in this very shed. It was shortly after hearing rumors about a monster looking about. However, despite being scared, he soon fell asleep. Probably would have been better if he hadn't though. For he looked in his dark and saw two green menacing eyes glowing right into his boiler. He screamed and ran right out of the shed. However, the monster whom those green eyes belonged to caught him. And that was that. He was never seen again. <laughs> Look, Charlie, you and I have been working in this yard together for years, and we both know that didn't happen. If there were green eyes in this shed, don't you think we would have, I don't know, figured it out by now and maybe... Torn down the shed. Gee, Hank. Thanks for ruining the story. I was hoping that a few of these younglings would get nightmares. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Hank. I myself thought that was rather creepy. There's nothing worse than seeing things that glow in the dark. Just ignore it, Steve. Charlie's being silly. It's just a story. This isn't Jupiter Reporter. At least their legacy has made sense. Get some rest, okay? The next morning, Charlie was upset. Didn't any of you like my story? Get lost, Charlie. Nobody at all? <sighs> it's because no one believes your story. Who in their right mind? would believe that a monster could consume a whole locomotive? So you're basically telling me that scary stories have to be realistic, huh? Yes! Charlie, I'm sick of your shenanigans when it comes to storytelling. You always act like yours are better than everyone else's, but they're not. What? You think I'm some kind of clown? Maybe? Ah, are you two planning to be a part of the circus next week? Circus? What circus? The Gem State Circus Show is coming to town. Mr. Winston told me earlier today. Aren't you excited? Sure enough, Anthony was right. Next week, the circus did indeed arrive in town and all the engines were very busy and quickly forgot about Charlie's silly story.
Sadly, the shell left as soon as it came, and the other engines were all sad to see it go. I don't think I'll ever forget this. I never realized how wild and cool circuses are. Yeah, they're alright. But let's get back to work, everyone. Fun time's over. The engine soon found that not everything was the way it was before. One evening, Charlie was returning from his long day of work. He was the only one in the yard as he pulled in and was grumbling as usual. Man, oh man. All that work with coal cars today is killing my axles. I'm getting too old for this sort of work. Charlie looked in the corner of the shed to see two menacing green eyes glaring at him, which nearly made him jump off the tracks. Oh my god! It's the monster! Hey, hey, hey! What on earth, Charlie? You knocked me off the rails! Well, that would be far better than getting consumed by the monster! What monster? The one with the glowy green eyes, remember? We both thought- Charlie, if I didn't believe your story from the other night when you told us, then don't expect me to believe it now. It's just a kid's story. Can you just leave it at that? You don't know what you're talking about! It's then there, I insist! No, don't go in there! It'll get you! I'm warning you! Alright. All in good time, Charlie, I guess. I'm sure this monster won't bite you. Uh, 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 uh. There's something in our shed. What is that? Something that would have eaten you if it wasn't for me. Oh, come on, Charlie. Don't be cheeky now. We've actually got a problem here. A big problem. You're telling me. I'm not sleeping in there tonight. The other engines soon came back, and they all saw the eyes for themselves. They all agreed that something had to be done. Perhaps what we need to do is get the police. They might know what to do. So they did exactly that. The police came and explained what was going on. As weird as it seems, there is something in our shed that has two green glowing eyes, and it's looking at us. We were wondering if you could help us get it out. Well... What we need to figure out first is, what exactly is it? Do you know? I'll be honest, sir, we don't know what it is. It's too dark to get any idea of what it is in there. Then we should proceed with caution. I bet it's some sort of animal. No, it's definitely a monster. One sadistic, bloodthirsty monster. Okay, we get it already, Charlie. Jeez. Right. I'll grab a flashlight and a gun, then investigate. Be careful. just dawned upon me. What's just dawned upon you? I've just noticed that whatever this thing is, it's clearly smaller than us. I mean, look at its eyes. Maybe it's just got really small eyes. I mean, look at spiders. They have giant heads, but really small eyes. Okay, one, it's definitely not a spider. Secondly, what I was going to say is it's probably closer to the size of a human than to the size of one of us. That's actually a good point. So... We, us engines, are not really in danger. We're probably a more dangerous threat to it than it is to one of us. But it could be a threat to people. Shoot. Now I'm worried for that officer. I wonder why none of the shop foremen warned us about this. Surely someone from the shops would have seen it. 
And also, I don't think it's actually got glowing eyes. That might just be our headlights reflecting off of its... Uh, oh, hello. What's this? It looked like a tiger. I could see orange fur and black stripes. And it didn't attack you? That's enough out of you, Charlie. Well, I'll be. How did that guy get in there? It might be an escape tiger from the circus. We should try to get him out of there. I know just the thing. The officer ran off to a nearby butcher shop and came back with two pounds of meat. They left a pile of it on the tracks in front of the shed. The tiger did indeed come out and started feasting on the meat. He was, after all, very hungry. Some monster, eh, Charlie? I mean, it could have attacked the officers if it wasn't for the meat. That's not all. Look at him. Wherever he has been, he must have been hurt. They could see the tiger was covered with scars and was very filthy. He was indeed in a lot of pain. We better call the circus. I'm sure they need him. Sure enough, the circus was indeed missing one of the tigers. They sent the tiger's keeper over, and he had a look at the tiger. Yup, that's him. You know, that animal is actually quite beautiful. Uh, f why, uh, why, thank you. His name's Dan. I've been wondering where he ran off to. Didn't expect him to... Huh, that's weird. Does, he doesn't seem to like you. Oh, of course he does. He's probably just not used to seeing me again. Alright, you sit down right now, you dumb beast. Dumb beast? Alright, Dan. I tried to treat you good, but now I'm going to have to get my whip out again. This is for your own good. Yeah. Dude, stop it! He's had enough! Hush there, little engine. This is how you handle wild animals such as him at the circus. <sighs> Only one thing to do. There! We should be able to lift him into a truck, and he'll be on his way back to the circus. When Dan woke up, he sure enough was in a truck and was transported away. <sighs> I'm glad that's over. We can't deal with wild animals in our yard. Sir, how can you say that? Did you see how that owner treated him? Well, I did, but he's, he's not my pet. I don't own him. Only his owner can decide on how to treat him. I... <sighs> probably just the animal lover in me. I just couldn't stand to get, see him get abused like that. Are you absolutely sure we can't save him from continuing to be abused by his owner? Um, that would be illegal. I'm sure he'll be fine. Just, why don't you get back to work? I don't want to talk about this anymore. Illegal indeed. Like what they're doing is any better. I should have known. Some circuses aren't as jolly as they seem to be. Just because Mr. Winston can't do anything doesn't mean we can't either. Later that night, Charlie was on a mission to find the circus that Dan belonged to. Little did he know that several other railways had learned about the incident. As he was approaching Carbondale, hey, hey, a switcher stopped him. I recognize him. you. Huh? You're one of the engines that was caught in that incident with the tiger at the circus. Must have been scary, huh? Well, it was at first, but I do care for that tiger. And I discovered that that very circus is abusing them. That's why he was hiding in our shed. Tell me, do you know where that circus is holding their next show? As a matter of fact, I do. Follow me.
So, remind me again. What do you plan to do? I'm going to set that tiger free. He doesn't deserve to be in the hands of that circus. Good luck. I'll be right here if you need me. Oh, I'm sure he'll recognize the smell of the meat in my cab. Just gotta get a little bit closer... Closer... Oh, thank God we found him! He's needed for tonight's show! I'll say. I never expected a bunch of dumb locomotives to find him. Dumb locomotives? Oh, he'll be sorry he said that. The two men soon unlocked the cage to let Dan out. As they were walking to the big top, Dan suddenly smelled something. It was the meat in Charlie's cab. He all of a sudden broke free from his chains and started running towards Charlie. He hopped into his cab. Excellent! Let's get out of here, old boy! The keeper felt his chains jerk, but didn't realize Dan was no longer with them until just now. Then he looked back, and the realization hit him. Hey, I know you! Ah, oh, scrap! You damn engine. Get back here, my cat! You know what he's gonna do, right? Not on my watch, he won't. Get in the truck! Aha! There he is! After him! They wouldn't be stupid enough to drive through the crossing, would they? So, Also, I'm afraid I have to stay here. I can't go any further. It's okay. Thanks for your help. How's the cat holding up? He's chilling out in front of my coal bunker. Seems to be much happier now that he's been fed. Well, I wish you the best of luck, mate. Yeah, thank you. And farewell. Charlie soon made it back to the city. He stopped just outside of the depot and informed Mr. Winston's nephew Kyle about the tiger, to which he called the police and the animal control. The control soon arrived. So, we got an abused tiger? Yeah, that's why I reported. He's from the Jim State Circus. I see. Well, I better get him to the pound. What's going to happen to him? I am hoping we can find him a new home somewhere. Though I am glad you reported this in, Charlie. You did the right thing. Oh, oh thanks. Charlie? Are, are you alright? No, I'm... I'm not, Kyle. What's wrong? I, I, I'm worried. 
I have heard about how animal shelters have put animals to sleep. In in other words, um... I see. <sighs> you better get some rest. I myself am staying up too late. You're right. Oh, My axles are killing me once again. Meanwhile, the police were sent to investigate the circus. The keeper and his friend did not survive the crash, but they discovered that there were at least five other people in on the animal abuse, who were soon arrested. The owner, meanwhile, was also held responsible, as he knew about what was going on, but didn't do anything about it. The news spread quickly, and the engines were soon talking about it. How about that? The tiger we found in this very shed turned out to be a part of a big conspiracy. I'll say. I can't help but wonder how they were caught. Uh, Hank. Can I talk to you in private? Sure thing. What you want? Charlie pulled Hank into a sighting to tell him what he did. <laughs> Alright, who are you and what have you done with Charlie? Very funny, Hank. Very funny indeed. But with all said and done, I feel kind of bad for getting the circus in hot water. Don't be. You did the right thing for, by standing up for that animal. I think it's ironic regarding that story you told us beforehand, though. It wasn't the, it wasn't the tiger those green eyes belonged to. It was the people who were abusing him at the circus. <laughs> yeah. My axles make me feel like I'm going to fall over. You thought of that tiger before you thought of yourself. That's dedication. The only question left is, what happened to that tiger? Charlie! Charlie! I have good news! What is it? Dan is in good hands. The animal control center have handed him over to an animal sanctuary. They take care of big cats like him. He's saved now, and has a much happier home. How about that, eh? Yes. How about that? Looks like today was the day I did something heroic. From that point on, Charlie finally felt that he had become a hero.